Fab Lab, we started the Fab Lab about just over five years ago. And the aim of the Fab Lab was to be a maker space for Sandwell College. So a maker space is obviously a place where you can come and make almost anything. We've got things like 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC machines, um, and robotics and things like that. So we can make, you know, people come in, it's either the students or we get artists and businesses in, um, and they make things like either things like the, the little drawers there, or um, the gears was made by an artist for a storytelling chair for a school. Um, and it's all about trying to be creative in a very sort of physical way. And this encourages people um, to not only understand how to make things, but it also increases their confidence um, and helps to sort of build on their knowledge that they're doing. You know, it could be in engineering or it could be applying their business studies or, you know, sometimes we work with so health and social care to create um, like posters and things like that. So it's, it's quite wide ranging, you know, art and engineering and everything sort of in between. Um, and then recently we've managed to get some funding from the combined authority for the EdTech demonstrator site. And the aim of the EdTech demonstrator site is to showcase new and emerging technologies um, for schools and education. But it's not just for students, but it's also about um, how we can make teaching easier for the teachers and mm -hmm. Um, also, you know, some of the back office processes and our aim is also to sort of help, you know, biz local businesses and entrepreneurs um, and just to sort of demonstrate some of the technology. Right. Okay. Okay. Over to you then, Ben. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Ben. Uh, I have the wonderful title of the uh, being the emerging technologies demonstrator at the fab lab um, so my role is about looking at kind of new and emerging technologies and seeing how we can kind of sort of apply them within the college um, and within the kind of the wider community as well to kind of sort of um, not only kind of improve teaching but kind of see how you might be able to kind of you know sort of improve delivery within the classroom how you might be able to kind of sort of improve back office processes how you may be able to kind of sort of like streamline your workload um, and then also to kind of sort of teach students about these new and interesting emerging technologies um, not just for the sake of it but so that actually they've got those sort of future skills that are going to prepare them for the future workplace um, because a lot of the things that we're starting to see kind of pop up now things like virtual reality things like augmented reality these are going to be things that, you know, are going to kind of sort of probably most likely grow over the next five to 10 years, particularly kind of the way that things have been going kind of over the last sort of 10 to 11 months as well. Um, so it's about kind of showing people um, the technologies that we have available and seeing how we can kind of find new uses for them. Because a lot of these things, they've, they, you know, they've, they've, they've just started, they've just developed, and we're looking to see kind of how we can, um, how, how we can kind of apply them within the college and a wider community. Um, so one of those that I think really aids teaching and, and aids the delivery of teaching is virtual reality. I think it's a really exciting piece of technology for teaching. And I really believe that it's going to transform how we deliver teaching now, kind of now and kind of both in the future as well. Um, so what exactly is virtual reality? Well, it's something that you wear. So um, you kind of put it over, over your eyes. Um, it's what we would call a wear piece of technology um, and the idea is that you can use it to kind of sort of step into a different world or to kind of see something see something different um, so you might be able to kind of sort of step into um, another area of your city another country um, another place in the universe um, you know you might be able to kind of go diving with it you might be able to kind of um, sort of see objects kind of in front of you the idea is that it kind of transports you to another world and kind of um, can introduce you to kind of new information and topics um, so when you move around kind of with your headset, um, and I've got one here just to show you, um, you can kind of see that you, just as you would kind of sort of move to your left or move to your right or see something different. Um, the idea is that if you kind of move your head around, you can kind of see different things from kind of a different area or a different perspective. Um, so it's designed to kind of be like reality in a digital format. Um, 
So the most simplest form of virtual reality um, is what we call um, a cardboard headset. So this was developed by Google. And the idea is that you can use your mobile phone for this. Um, so all you would need to do is just kind of sort of pop your mobile phone inside a headset. And to give you an example, is a nice sort of Samuel College branded one here. All I would do is just kind of open the front here. And then inside, I've got sort of two holes for my eyes with some little kind of magnifying lenses. And then what I would do is I would just kind of pop my phone in here and then I would close it up and that would be my headset and I would pop it on. My phone's a little bit too big for this headset, but um, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a demo just so that you can see. And the idea is that I can sort of freely move around and kind of see things within a different reality. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to kind of run through um, sort of how you can use it, what you can do with it, um, and sort of how it's going to relate to the classroom, as well as kind of some of my sort of favourite apps and how you can use them as well. Um, so I'm also going to kind of run through as well how you can kind of get started with this technology kind of straight away, because I'm conscious that, you know, with the situation that we're in at the moment, we're all working from home, everyone's studying from home. How can we use this te technology straight away to use it kind of moving forward so that there's no delay with that at all? Um, and just to point out as well that we don't necessarily need to use this headset to, um, to kind of get started with virtual reality. We can just kind of start on our phones to try it out and then we can kind of move on to a headset kind of at a later point. So it's not a complete kind of sort of prerequisite to begin with. Um, and then finally, I'm going to kind of run through kind of the future of virtual reality and where that's going to kind of sort of where, you know, where I think that's going to sort of take us with teaching, where I think that might take us with kind of the future of the workplace, the future of schools and how we can kind of sort of deal with things moving forwards. Um, and this talk, as kind of with all of the talks that we're planning with Tech Tuesdays, they're designed for complete beginners. Um, so you don't need to kind of really kind of have any experience with virtual reality before. You don't need to have kind of tried on a virtual reality headset. Although obviously if you've got more experience kind of using a mobile phone or kind of maybe working within something like IT or media, um, then it may be something that you're a little bit more kind of familiar with moving forwards. So what can you do with VR? Um, a wide variety of things. I personally believe that there are applications for virtual reality within every subject within Samwell College, within Samwell College Group, and for every single kind of type of teaching profession. Um, realistically, if your subject that you teach involves showing someone something or kind of showing them a video or anything where you might look at a picture or a diagram, then you can apply VR to your subject. Um, and as a result of that, I mean, the most common things that we're using VR for the moment is traveling to different kind of countries and worlds, visiting places. So this could be used quite widely for things like going on school trips. Um, but we can also use it to kind of sort of imagine things as well, because it's a virtual reality. So it doesn't necessarily have to be kind of completely real what we're looking at. It can be a simulation, say, of the universe, of the solar system. We could use it to kind of explore a... Uh, digital version of the past or videos from the past. Um, another thing that we can use virtual reality for, and it's again something that you know is a really nice widespread use that we could use across the board with teaching, mm -hmm. is for immersive film. So watching a film that you know sort of really kind of immerses you in sort of an environment within a setting and engages you because you can look around at it in 360 degrees and you can actually feel like you're there. Um, Again, similarly with things like live concerts and events, it's becoming a lot more popular um, as a way to kind of sort of really feel like you're in the moment and you're experiencing something. Um, and another one that um, I think was particularly pertinent, going to be pertinent with teaching is the use of VR for training videos, uh, giving them kind of a way to kind of, giving students a way to kind of sort of really understand things in a, in a kind of a more sort of personalized format. Um, so I've definitely kind of seen applications with VR that I can see kind of clearly moving forwards for things like art, geography, history, science, ICT, design, technology, architecture, languages, even things like maths, music, and English. Um, so I'm confident that every single one of you can go away with some form of use for VR moving forwards um, after today. If you still can't think of one after today, then get in touch with us because if there's one thing that we like at Fab Lab, it's a challenge um, and we'd be more than happy to kind of think up some fantastic creative idea of how you could apply VR within the classroom. But I'm really confident that you can use it for pretty much anything. So 
I've kind of told you about it, but I think actually the best way to kind of show you VR is to show you it. So these are some, uh, these are some videos that I recorded this morning on my phone whilst wearing the headset. Um, so I'll play them through. It's a collection of a few different things. And obviously when you see the camera moving, that's me moving my head. Today, we can go and have a look at them ourselves. This is a titanosaur. If I was on an ordinary television program, I'd say that it was about 40 meters long, which is as long as three double-decker buses in line. What's happening inside your body? Have you ever wondered how little we know about our bodies? The human body is an amazing and unique machine. Planet wobbles its star due to gravitational attraction that this planet is about eight times the mass of the Earth. And we also know from its sort of... So as you can see, there's a really wide variety of uses of VR. You can use it to kind of explore different worlds. You can use it for a variety of different subjects. Um, and um, to be honest, the video doesn't do its full justice because you've got to imagine wearing it as a headset and it feels like you're actually kind of within those environments. Um, I mean, I think um, I think all of us at the Fab Lab team will say we've had many uh, an immersive experience in virtual reality where you kind of sort of take off the headset after having it on for five or 10 minutes um, and you almost kind of just need a moment to sort of sit down because you know you were just in the jungle and now you're not in the jungle um, and you need to kind of sort of readjust to kind of exactly where you are um, and kind of what you've just seen um, so I think I think it's a really exciting technology and it's a really nice way to kind of show learners something and show them kind of content that you would sort of normally show within a lesson um, but just kind of in a slightly different format the one thing that I will just mention with virtual reality is that when you use virtual reality on your phone, um, it will split the video in half. So one half of your screen will be for your left eye and the other half of your screen will be for your right eye. But obviously I've transformed it into a just kind of a single view so that we can see it fine for the purposes of today's presentation. But with a lot of virtual reality apps as well, if you don't have the headset, then you can just kind of use it in a, in a view just like you're kind of seeing right now on your phone and you can move it around with your hands in different angles and you can kind of get a similar experience. So like I said, a headset is a nice to have because you feel a lot more immersed because of it, um, but it's not something that's absolutely essential if you wanna kind of get started with things straight away. Um, so I'm gonna run through two of my sort of favorite apps for teaching um, that you can kind of start using straight away with your learners. Um, there are other apps that I would recommend as well, but I think these two are the easiest to get started with. Um, primarily because both of them have a huge wealth of content um, and they're easy to kind of get going with. With something like YouTube, it's probably something that you're using with your classes already. Um, so it's only a very small further step that you need to kind of take in order to kind of sort of branch out into VR. Um, and it's it's therefore not kind of much, much more that you kind of really need to kind of sort of in integrate into kind of what you're doing already. Um, so I'll run you through the first app, which is called Expeditions. Um, now with this app, you can just download it to your phone um, off your app store. So, you know, it works on both Apple and Google. And if I can just start this video, you download the app and then right at the top here, um, where you can scroll down and obviously see all of the different experiences. There's a huge number of experiences. There's about 230 um, VR experiences alone. You can tap VR at the top and that will just show all of the VR experiences that are inside the app. Once you've tapped on one, you just download it to your device and then you've got three options. So you can view it in just kind of one screen, like I was mentioning. You can view it in two screens. Um, so you can 
you know, for one for each eye, for each kind of headset. Or there's also a guide mode as well, which um, if we were in the classroom at the moment would be really useful because it means that you can have a device as a teacher and then all of your students can use their phones. And for each student, um, you can kind of control what's on their phones using your phone as like a master phone. So that guide function is really useful. Um, unfortunately, not something we can use at the moment because it relies on sort of local Wi-Fi um, from your phone. Um, but um, something to maybe kind of consider when you are back in the classroom. And you can kind of swipe along um, to kind of see different experiences. They're like different categories, different sort of uh, views within kind of one category, or you can swipe up to kind of read text on each one as well. So it, 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 it's very simple, very simple and easy to use. Uh, the next one is, uh, the next one is YouTube. And now I'm sure you're thinking, why am I showing you YouTube? Um, but there are lots of interesting hidden features to the YouTube app. And I can show you how you can kind of sort of convert videos into kind of a VR format. So one of the things that YouTube has, as well as just normal videos that we watch every day, is that it has a feature where you can watch 360 degree videos. Um, and the way that you do this is you search for normal content that you would normally kind of go for. So in this case, I'm looking for videos of Antarctica, but I'm pressing the button in the top right hand corner and then I'm scrolling down and then I either want to select 360 degrees um, or VR 180. And then that will only search for 360 degree videos on the YouTube platform. And then as a result, I can kind of find them. I can share them with other learners. In this case, I'm looking at it um, in, um, in a screen suitable for a cardboard headset. I'm just pressing that little sort of cardboard button to do so. And then what I'm showing you now is a way to watch 2D videos, but in virtual reality. Um, and the, the advantage of this is that you're watching kind of a normal video, um, but it's almost, it almost feels like you're sat in kind of like a private cinema. Um, so it, it, it's quite strange and it does feel very, it does feel very immersive, but it's a way to kind of watch a normal video, but kind of give it a little bit more flair, give it a little bit more, a little bit more excitement as a result. Um, so th there's those two options, which I'd really highly recommend for YouTube. Um, but again, if someone doesn't have a headset, you can just watch a 360 video by moving your phone around at different angles and seeing things. So that's an option if you want to kind of get started with VR kind of straight away without being kind of constrained by any need for headsets or things like that. There are some other apps that I will I would recommend as well. Um, now I'm not going to kind of go into these too much because they are a little bit more niche, um, but I'd recommend um, The Guardian does a VR app and there's another app called Within. They're really good for kind of watching sort of immersive VR videos. So these are videos that have been designed specifically for VR and they're designed to kind of sort of tell stories or kind of provoke kind of um, points of view, reactions, discussions. Um, so for some subjects, you might find this useful to kind of sort of provoke discussions um, around different topics of current affairs, things like that. There's a really good one for science called MEL VR lessons, which shows various kind of sort of um, atoms, um, different points of chemistry, different laws of physics, which is quite useful. They have kind of a free app, but then there are also, there are also kind of paid plans that you can look at as well. Um, if you work anything within the arts, I'd really recommend um, Google Arts and Culture, um, which is an app where you can visit a variety of different museums and art galleries around the world. Um, and you can see kind of different objects um, and I mean, the, there's so much to that app. I mean, you could spend hours looking at it. It's just filled, filled with content. Um, and then a couple of other ones that are really interesting. Um, one is a calm room app. So you can pop this on and you can kind of go into a quiet, calm space where you watch kind of some nice visuals and some audio. And as a result, you can kind of sort of uh, feel a little bit more relaxed, which I think we can all probably do with a little bit um, during these uh, during these strange times. And then um, the final one for this one, which you might want to have a look at, and it might be useful for students, um, is a way of kind of practicing presentations. Um, so what you do is you pop your headset, pop, pop your phone in the headset, and then it's basically kind of videos of kind of um, you standing up in front of an audience um, or kind of giving a presentation or going for a job interview. And so you're kind of looking around. So it's just like you're kind of in the room there with the interviewer or there with the audience, um, but you're giving a presentation kind of as a result. Um, and it's an interesting way to kind of sort of pr practice those kind of sort of soft skills, um, which your students might find useful um, if they're preparing for some form of presentation. Um, a couple of others that I thought I'd mention as well. Um, 
One of them is called Immerse Me. If you're a languages teacher, I definitely check it out. It's not an app. Um, you need to kind of go onto their website for it, but it works in a similar way. And the idea is you can use it to sort of learn languages in VR. Um, I'd really recommend you to check that one out. They do offer some free demo stuff, but then there's also a paid plan as well. Um, and then finally, Google Earth and Street View. These aren't strictly VR apps. They don't work in a headset, but you can use them and move them around with your phone which makes them very easy and straightforward to get started with. Um, but you can use it to kind of go on school trips and visit different places and kind of go to go to go to different parts of the world and kind of explore different things. And I think they're just as uh, they're just as interesting and just as useful. Shame they don't have the uh, the cardboard setting, but still I think given given the situation we're in with the remote learning at the moment, I'd take advantage of them just as much. So, if you want to get started with VR, um, I've got sort of two options for you about how you would implement that and kind of um, sort of get started with that and getting running kind of straight away. If you want to get VR into your sort of with your students and into your virtual classroom tomorrow, um, technically you don't need anything to it. All you need is a, each one of your students to kind of have a phone and they can take advantage of the apps and use them and move them around, like I mentioned before. There's no cost to that provided all of your students have phones and there's no kind of sort of planning or preparation time or ordering or any kind of sort of setting up on your part. Uh, you really can kind of get this into the classroom straight away if you want to. Uh, if having decided that you think you'd like to take further, um, there's a low cost option. Um, the, the, the sort of the next step up would be to kind of sort of buy sets of VR headsets for your students. So kind of something along the lines of kind of what I mentioned here, where it's either kind of sort of made out of plastic or it's made out of cardboard and you can kind of pop your phone in. These aren't particularly expensive. So if you bought a set for your whole classroom, you wouldn't be looking at a huge amount of money. Um, I, I mean, we had some quotes the other day for some headsets and we were looking at sort of probably a maximum of about sort of for, for, for a cheap kind of one made out of cardboard, a maximum of about £4.50, minimum of about sort of £2.90, depending on kind of sort of how many you order. If you want to buy kind of ones that are a little bit more kind of um, sturdy, these plasticky ones, you can pay up to sort of £15. But if you're buying in bulk and you're buying from, say, like a branded goods company, so a company that sells like branded pens, branded mugs, stuff like that, they're a really good place to approach for VR headsets because not only can you get your logo on it, but also they tend to kind of deal with bulk, sort of deal with sort of bulk bulk purchases of these instead of kind of sort of one-offs. Um, so that would really be on your only kind of cost to kind of start out with VR if you wanted to kind of sort of um, adopt kind of the next stage. The only other thing I would say obviously be mindful of is check all of your students have phones. I think we can, you know, sort of assume that most students will do, but we want to make sure that obviously, you know, sort of none of our students are excluded um, and that everyone kind of does have a phone to access this technology with. In with remote learning and kind of lockdown, that might obviously be more difficult. But when we kind of move back into the classroom in the future, you might want to think about getting a cheap classroom set. Um, realistically, you can probably get a phone. Uh, you can get a very basic Android smartphone for about fifty pounds. If you buy them in bulk, they will be cheaper, and that will do kind of the majority of the VR work that you need to kind of do um, to kind of sort of run the apps that you want to run. Um, so, having gone through that, um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention is that. As sort of as a team, sort of within Fab Lab, we can offer you support if you want to kind of implement this within the classroom. Um, so we've ordered a set of kind of sort of cardboard headsets, very similar to the ones that you can kind of see in the photo. If you want a set to kind of sort of trial out with your learners to kind of use in the classroom, then by all means get in touch with us and we can kind of source you with kind of a few to kind of sort of try out. Or if you want to make a larger order, we are potentially looking at making a bigger order kind of within the next few days, within the next week or so. So we can maybe look at kind of sort of, you know, sort of combining that in with our order. The one thing that I will mention with the cardboard headsets that I forgot to mention earlier is that these ones fold up into basically kind of sort of smaller than kind of sort of an A5 package. So these are things that you can potentially post out to students, um, you know, so um, you, they don't necessarily need to kind of sort of come in and pick them up or you don't need to drop them off you could potentially kind of stick these cheap ones out in the post. We can also give you advice around sort of using VR apps. So if you're looking for kind of how can I use VR within my classroom, where does it fit? We can give you advice on that. Um, we can potentially advise you as well making a VR app for kind of your subject area. Bear in mind that does take time. So it would probably be something that would take 
a matter of months, probably not a matter of weeks. So it wouldn't be for this current lockdown period, I'm afraid. Mm. And if you want any advice about kind of sort of brainstorming new uses or new ideas for VR or any form of those sort of technologies, by all means do get in touch. Um, so that concludes kind of what I wanted to talk about in terms of using VR in the classroom for remote learning. I did just want to cover a short little bit um, just before we move on to the open discussion about kind of where VR is going within kind of education and within kind of schools and learning moving forwards. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you was kind of some of the brand new state of the art sort of VR headsets that we have kind of within the Fab Lab. These are called Oculus Quest 2s. And these are kind of a professional form of VR that you can buy. You can buy it from sort of local high street retailers now. These retail for about three, three to four hundred pounds, depending on the model that you buy. And it's a professional headset um, and it comes with these kind of little hand controllers as well. So you've kind of got some little kind of buttons, almost a bit kind of like a, um, you know, sort of like a PlayStation or something like that. And you've got one for each hand. Um, and the idea with this is that it kind of sort of brings it up. It takes it up to kind of the next lotch. And not only can you move around and see things, but you can also kind of sort of pick things up, interact with things with the controllers. These controllers effectively give you hands. Um, so it it, 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 it it takes it to kind of the next level. And we're really excited about this technology at Fab Lab because I think, I mean, I think we all think that it's going to transform how we carry out tasks moving forwards with everything that's happened in the last sort of 10 to 11 months. A lot of things have kind of moved digital, they've moved online. And whilst we hope that, you know, kind of when the next few months um, we'll return to kind of more of a sort of a normal, a normal reality, shall we say, I think some things will remain digital and they will remain online. And I think a lot of things where we kind of have meetings, for example, or, you know, where we speak to people, we may not necessarily travel as much to kind of sort of go to places than we did before. And we may be starting to think, well, actually, a digital solution might just be an easier option for all of us than what we've kind of been doing in the past. Um, so some of the things that we think that VR is going to kind of sort of, um, you know, sort of transform moving forwards um, are things like um, meetings, art, designing new objects, working, travel, um, study. I could go on forever, but actually, I think probably the best thing for me to do is show you. This is a use of VR where someone's actually drawn in 3D. So you can literally sort of draw in the air and kind of create pieces of artwork. And this is another person who's kind of going around and exploring kind of what they've done. I mean, I'm not, an, I'm not much of an artist myself, but I think this is a really exciting tool to use. Some of the apps that we have on our professional VR headsets, we've been playing around with and they're great fun. This is a more sort of technical use of VR. So this is where you can actually um, sort of create 3D models. Um, we're really excited about this for CAD moving forwards. We think it's really gonna transform the way that sort of people design objects, um, not only for kind of sort of manufacturing and engineering, um, but you know, also kind of within the maker industry, designing objects for kind of sort of 3D printing. Architecture, for example, um, is another big one that we're really excited about. And we think it's gonna really gonna sort of change how, how we do things. Um, because it, it's a really kind of physical, kind of kinesthetic, very kind of natural way of doing things. And finally, again, you can see the, the applications here with architecture, where you can just kind of sort of sketch something out with your two controllers very naturally, very quickly, quicker than you could do it on a computer um, or a similar time that you could do it on a computer. But you can actually walk around these objects and see things from different angles, um, which, is, um, which is quite quite something. And then finally, um, you know, we can use VR to kind of actually do sort of real life simulations of things. Um, so this is a very simple app, but it's designed to kind of sort of model being on a construction site. Um, so you're actually kind of sort of using using the controllers to move the machines or to kind of pick up bricks. Um, so we think it will, it will be used a lot more for kind of things like training and simulation, where it might be expensive or dangerous to kind of carry out that training if you could do it in VR instead. And I think that will filter through into kind of sort of teaching and learning moving forwards as well. So um, just to finish with saying, we have a classroom set of these Oculus Quest 2s. They are the latest sort of most high-tech VR headsets that you can buy um, kind of at consumer level. Um, we've been sort of testing them out over the last couple of months to kind of see what uses they have within kind of sort of Samuel College, Samuel College Group, what we can kind of do to kind of improve teaching, make it more exciting, improve processes, um, as members of staff of the college, we'd really like to kind of sort of reach out to you. And if you would like to borrow a headset, 
maybe for anything up to kind of a couple of weeks on loan to try it out to kind of see what uses you think you might be able to kind of do with students as educators then by all means get in touch with us because we would be really pleased and we'd be really interested in kind of sort of um, getting your thoughts and feedback on kind of what you think of this, these kind of sort of new technologies. And in a similar fashion, you know, we can advise on kind of what apps might be good for your subject area, brainstorming new ideas for kind of um, content, um, possibly even kind of making apps. Um, again, that would take time to do, but if we've got a really good concept, then that could be something that we could kind of work with as well. Um, and for obviously if it is something, I mean, we've, you know, we're looking at getting a couple of classroom sets, but if you are, for example, outside of Samuel College and you want advice on kind of purchasing them or kind of what to consider, then by all means do reach out as well. And we'd be more than happy to um, give you advice on kind of what we think about this moving forwards. So that finalizes my bit. Um, I do apologize, I have run a little bit over, but I hope you found it interesting. Um, just to say that I'll, I'll send obviously out these slides afterwards. Um, if you do wanna have a chat with me about how VR might work within kind of your world of teaching, by all means do reach out to me, drop me an email. There's a link below or you can scan it with a QR code. It can just, you can just book a meeting in with me in my calendar and I'm more than happy to kind of have a detailed chat with you about how it might work for kind of your, your subject area or how some other form of emerging technology might work for your subject area um, or, you know, just a general chat about using these technologies in the future um, and how it kind of might work with your department. Um, so thank you very much. <laughs>